Uh, my name is Langdon White, and I am a developer evangelist for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and I work for Red Hat, obviously. Uh, and I talk to developers about some of our new tools and uh, kind of the development platform that we offer. And I also find out what they don't like about those tools. And I work with engineering to try to make those things better uh, wherever I can. So what are you doing in Montreal today? So I'm here for PyCon. Uh, Red Hat was a sponsor, and we had a booth, and we had uh, actually a lot of people come by. I was primarily here to talk about software collections, uh, which is kind of a way of uh, installing different components into Enterprise Linux uh, than are native, so that you can get, for many people, it's a more recent version of something. So if you want Python 3.3, for example, uh, you can now get that through Red Hat Software Collections in an included supported subscription. Uh, like it's just included. And it's also in all the developer subscriptions. So that way, if you want to be using Python 3.3 rather than, I think, in RHEL 6 um, is Python 2.6. And so you want something more current for some applications, uh, this is a way to do that. So, you know, we have customers who don't complain, right, because they like the stability of enterprise Linux for a long period of time. Um, but then we also have a fair number of customers who want some application to change more regularly than it could with typical enterprise Linux. So this is really targeted to that user group. Uh, and so the life cycle on it is about three years. And so you can kind of mix and match the various stuff in there. So it's like Python, but there's also like Postgres and Postgres 9 and uh, MariaDB and MySQL and Node.js. And so you have all these kind of plethora of other things that you might want to use on enterprise Linux that are uh, kind of more what we generally say is uh, you know kind of uh, recent but stable mm -hmm. you know so we don't we don't do bleeding edge but we do stuff that we think is productionalizable as it were and uh, if you're getting the software license from us they're also fully supported uh, just like the rest of the enterprise Linux platform um, there's also another product called the developer tool set which includes uh, the latest version of GCC. Uh, so for the C and C++ developer group, in the developer tool set are things where you uh, want to build something, uh, but you don't need anything on the target environment, so you don't need anything on the server. Right with Python, you need the Python VM on the server as well. But the developer tool set includes all the things you might just use on your desktop. So when you build a binary, obviously you can just move the binary over. You don't need anything from C++. So there's all that, but there's also like eclipses in there and a bunch of performance monitoring tools and, you know, so kind of all the things you use as a developer, but don't need in production. And you mean that you, you can switch version, you can switch platform on the fly? Correct, per application, right? So you can be running a, a you know a Python application that is in Python 2.6 and another one in Python 2.7 and another one in Python 3.3 all in the same machine mm -hmm. uh, without them conflicting with each other. Okay. So it's like having a several VM on your machine? In some ways it solves the same problem as virtual env, um, but it's more generic than that. So with virtual env, you can't also do that with Postgres, mm -hmm. right? So we kind of ship all these different things, and it's kind of like virtual env, except that it's at the OS level, so you just do yum update and you get, you know, patches and all that stuff too. And what's the magic in it? How does it work? It's actually really, really simple. Um, so it's just normal RPM. So a software collection is actually a set of RPMs and it can be confusing because I, you know, you refer to it as a singular, but really it's a set of RPMs. It's kind of broken up the same way Python would be normally. Um, and the way it works is it installs under opt instead of under the native place where it goes normally. And then there's a little scriptlet that just basically changes your paths around before you run the application so that it thinks that the stuff under opt opt is the stuff in native. That's interesting. How did people receive that uh, information here? The developers, is that something they're interested in? or? Yeah, um, so not only are developers interested, but uh, uh, sysadmins are also very interested uh, because the developers yell at them a lot about what, you know, not being able to get the latest version. And the sysadmins are like, well, you know, I don't want to ship something that's not supported, you know, blah, blah, blah. So uh, both sides of the house are pretty regularly uh, interested in uh, this tool chain because it kind of lets them meet demands from the other side. The other thing I really like about it and is usually an interesting subject, particularly for developers, is that in OpenShift, which is our platform as a service, um, a lot of the OpenShift cartridges are actually based on the same software collections. So if, you know, what often happens, right, developers go rogue and they go build something on, say, OpenShift.com because the CEO is screaming at them. Uh, and then it starts to take, right? And so then they want to deploy it inside their own data center, right, or, or put it under like their normal management. 
And so then they take it over the sysadmins and they're like, you know, we don't, we don't do public cloud, you know, what is this, you know, go away. Uh, and so what I think is really cool is that because uh, many of the software collections are the same, you should be able to just pick up an application in from openshift.com and drop it onto a software collection running on RHEL. Um, you could also drop it on OpenShift running in your data center, but you don't have to, right? You have a lot of different options for how you deploy it in a data center. You know, if you want to keep it in the public cloud, that's an option too, but, you know, kind of gives you the flexibility of moving the application around without having to uh, go back and talk to development and redoing the code, uh, you know, or QA or any of that stuff. You have a lot more portability, and then the sysadmins particularly like that because then they don't get stuck on a particular version of, say, Enterprise Linux mm -hmm. because some application needs that version. Version. Mm -hmm. So if you use a software collection, then again, the OS becomes a little bit independent of the application itself. Great. So now if we want to learn more about this solution, where do we go on the web? Uh, so we actually just launched an upstream uh, for it. So you can go to softwarecollections.org uh, and kind of that's now the upstream for all the Red Hat ones. Uh, if you want the ones that we ship, uh, then they're actually, like I said, they're basically already included. If you're using kind of the older subscription model, RHN, it's literally adding a channel. Um, and if you're using the new one in Subscription Manager, you just kind of have to enable the repos. So it's, it's pretty easy, and then you say yum install Python 3.3, and you're done. <laughs>